share the screen. Here we go. Share. There we go. Can you see it? Can you see Tracy's? Very good. Hi. It's yours. Well, thank you everybody for um, being here and listening to me. Probably only be about 10 minutes. I won't take up too much of your time. So for those of you that don't know who Mencap are, we're a national UK based charity supporting people with learning disabilities. Yes. And we provide um, campaigning and activism to, to fight for the rights and the needs of people with learning disability. But we also provide social care support for people either in their own homes or um, in the community. And that's probably the largest part of our organization. Um, my role is assistive technology lead for MENCAP. And that looks at all the technology that for people with a learning disability, what they might use and what our staff might use to support them to become as independent as possible and add to their quality of life. Um, on the screen, you can see um, we've got today's going to be awesome, our big plan. Our big plan is a new strategy to move our organisation into a more modern way of working, a more holocratic organisation. We move in hierarchy and looking at a more um, self-empowered teams model. And as part of that, we want to be able to introduce technology as part and parcel of the way we deliver support across the organisation. Um, to do that, we've um, got a working group, a strategic working group, who are looking at um, ways we might do that um, effectively. It's a new way of working to many, many people that we work with. We support about eight and a half thousand people. Um, and there's a lot of traditional ways of supporting people going on. And we want to see how we can embed that technology for the benefit of the people with a learning disability. So we set up some working groups as part of a, a technology strategy. We call it technology for life, because it should be technology that helps them live the life the way that they want to. And that's part of our overall big plan. So looking at the, the next screen, do I just click that one? Yeah, so our vision is to make the UK the best place in the world for people with learning disabilities to live happy, healthy lives. And to do that, we realise that we live in a technological world and we need to help people live in that world and not rely on um, support, physical support, as much as they currently do. And perhaps use technology as we might to enhance our life and make things easier for us. And the same could apply for them. And if we don't, they face further inequity of needing yet somebody else to help them do something that we all take for granted to do on it by ourselves. So we started using um, agile methodology to do this as part of a whole organisational way of working. But within the, the group we worked on, we looked at um, going through sort of an understand phase and empathise and define where and how we might embed um, assistive technology within the processes that we currently use. And to do that, we use what we call design um, thinking as part of a, a suite of, material, of resources you can use with Agile. And part of that was um, looking at a design at a, an empathy map. And that looked at a process and it broke it down into what was a persona. So we chose some personas, we chose five personas. What would that person be thinking, doing and feeling during that process? And the five personas that we chose were People with a learning disability, we had two people, one who was fairly um, young, aged in their early 20s, new to um, being provided with care and support in the community, and, a, and a, another persona of a gentleman who was that bit older and has been through the care system, but may be supported by MENCAP for the first time. And we looked at two processes. One was our needs assessment and support planning, how we establish what that person needs and wants and how we're going to support them to achieve that. And the other process was a review process that we have at least once a year to review how things have gone and how things might go in the future and what they'd like to achieve. And we felt that they were the two key points um, within a person's journey with us where we would be specifically talking about assistive technology. That would be the most likely time. That's not to exclude any of the other times. It's just that they would be the most key moments that we need to address. So we conducted um, some empathy maps we looked at what people think of that process what they feel and what they're doing during that process and from that we came up with some um, feedback so what we discovered um, in the initial support planning process was that the initial um, reactions for a person who was younger the introduction was really important but the person that was slightly older with a learning disability that they um, it was more about 
talk, getting to know them a bit more and getting to understand what changes have occurred since they last had a review with their local authority. The next persona was a family member and both those moments mattered for the family member. And then I'll, I'll skip over support worker and go to the social worker. And again, the first impression really counted. So if we were to put technology in place, we'd have to be very sure of ourselves what we were saying and what we were doing at that point. But the interesting thing was that um, for the family member, talking to everybody in their environment was important. So we don't want to be um, explaining and introducing things at that moment in time necessary. We want them to feel comfortable in the environment. But for our staff, for the workforce, agreeing the support and putting together a support plan was the key moments for them, the key moments that mattered in that journey. And the little, um, the dark squares indicate the moments that mattered that were chosen as part of that group work with six services and around about 22 people in total who inputted what they thought their feelings would be. And then we looked at the review process. So the person's already with us and we're viewing what's happened over the past year. We're looking at how they're feeling now, what they would like to get out the year ahead and what sort of plans and goals and ambitions and wishes that they would have. And it's, it's kind of interesting that um, yet again, the same pattern appears is that the, 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 the bit where it matters for staff was around deciding what that process looked like and how to break that down into milestones. And that was a key moment for staff. And when we looked about the key moments, we looked at what their feelings were. And overall, where those key moments are, where the moments that matter, the overall um, feeling was anxiety. It was an anxious feeling, some excitement, some happiness and nervousness, but anxiety was quite high. And then we spoke about why it matters. So we felt that technology would most likely to be introduced during these stages and understanding those moments that matter will help inform where support resources um, should be for each of those people to minimize that resistance to um, adopting something new or a new way of working. At the end of the day, it's a change in the way people are being supported. So it needs managing as if it's a change process. And the feelings, how they directly inform the intention areas when we're looking at how, using technology to support somebody. And from the feedback we got, the overarching aspects, um, barriers to adoption from the dialogue that, was, that, that we had was money, where we're going to, how we're going to fund it now to buy something and how we're going to fund it in the future, if it's a subscription model or it needs updating regularly. Fear of the unknown, just not knowing what you don't know is kind of a little bit scary, particularly for somebody with a learning disability. What resources would they have? What coaching would they have? Um, there was a high significance in all the conversations about workforce development and the importance of bringing the circle of support that surround a person along the journey with us rather than working against them. So the whole, the whole feeling was that everybody needs to be invested in making it work. It can't just be a, a, a piece of technology that you put in front of somebody because it fits a need. It's more about how they adopt that technology and the support and the affirmation that the whole circle of support can give them. And then we looked at, I asked some questions about what technology would services like? This is to our six service teams. What benefits would you identify by using technology? What barriers would you come against? How would you break down those barriers? What tools and resources would you need and where would you find them? And the interesting thing about that journey is that they were very good at saying what sort of technology they think might be helpful. And we're looking at everyday technology at this point in time. So things like your Alexas and smartwatches, mobile phones, things you and I would use every day and not really think about. They were very clear about the benefits they think they could exert from them. And but they weren't so clear about how to break down those barriers. This is where the, the responses weren't quite so um, voluminous or there was a lot of discussion about what wouldn't work. And it often got down to the granular of what wouldn't work for a particular person rather than a group. And then tools and resources um, you might be needed and where to find them was also an area. And the bits in red have been highlighted because they all relate to training of staff or coaching of staff or coaching of people around it. And that was the predominant thing that came out of this process is that actually we need to get the basis, we need to get the, the foundation right. So not, very, not so good just to put a piece of technology in and hope it will work. 
It's about making sure that when you put any piece of technology into a service, that they have the skills, understanding, and the knowledge necessary to embrace that technology, encourage the person with a learning disability through that change process effectively to make that technology work for them and to make it stick, to maintain it. So the next steps we spoke about with the staff was to work again with the group in January of next year. It's very busy in learning disability world around about Christmas. Lots of things are going on. Um, working with the Include Me group. The Include Me group is a group of people with a learning disability that we work with who give their insight and their views to co-create this rather than doing two, we're doing together with. And using those in insights to collaborate with yourselves at Loughborough and establish research around responses from that working group to perhaps look at some funding, to provide some non-partial evaluation from yourselves, hopefully, and uh, working with other charities and findings and resources so we can share um, what we do well and what didn't work so well, so we can inform each other and combine that in the new year. So in continuing the work in the new year, we're looking at reviewing in more detail the feedback from the questionnaires. There's still a few more to come in. Um, the monthly feedback to the group is what we're going to provide them, feedback to yourselves about what we're doing so we can collaborate and share what our findings are with yourself, feedback to our Include Me group, and to arrange some sessions in January. And that's me. Thank you. Hang on, Tracy. Um, that was fantastic. Thank you. Maybe some questions for Tracy quickly. Anybody have any questions? And they turned them into or, silence. Yeah, well, it might have just been crystal clear. <laughs> so when you said support for the staff, yes, because what I got back was that the people with learning disability were asking, was it the staff I was asking about? It the... was the group, so it was the staff that were talking about what they think would work. Right. Um, but they didn't all, the digital literacy um, is quite low. It's not an mm -hmm. area, it's not... In, uh, in the staff. Yeah, it's not a sector that's used digital no. technology in mm -hmm. abundance, so it's, it's fairly new to mm -hmm. them. So there is a, a, a way to go to help them feel comfortable in doing that. And if they are uncomfortable in using technology, that will... Um, radiate back onto the people that of course. are trying to support. Of course. So um, the finding was that actually we need to make sure that the group of people, the staff that we have, yeah. and also their support circle are really understanding what we're doing, why we're yeah. doing it, how it's going to work, and how it can benefit the person with the learning yeah. disability to have that sort of bedrock before mm -hmm. we introduce the technology itself. So what does the technology actually do? depends on what they choose. Ah, okay. So it's, it's down to their personal choice. So it could mm -hmm. be an Alexa for reminders. Right, right, okay. It, it could be um, a GPS watch so that they can learn to travel independently yeah. in the community. It could just be using Zoom. Yeah. And to keep in touch with their relatives and friends, or it could be, it could be a number of things, whatever they want it to be. Um, it's about so finding it's existing technology. Existing technology. And, and have you done sort of like a scoping exercise to think, is this useful for people beforehand? You've collected this on a... On no, a... this is about trying. This is about um, agile thinking, so design yeah. and thinking. So then um, prototyping, feeding back, prototyping, feeding back till we come up with something. But because everyone's an individual, there might be a whole plethora of different things. Okay. But it's more about the process and how we make sure staff are comfortable with whatever's mm -hmm, thrown mm -hmm. at them, as opposed yeah. to, um, it's not about the technology, it's about what people want as an outcome and what technology sure. will help them meet the outcome yeah. that they choose. So are you making schemas? I can see Rosie there. Rosie's got a question. Ooh, that's wow, <laughs> Rosie is, we're, we're keeping Rosie here in a dungeon. So that's why she's <laughs> just coming a bit. Uh, but, ooh, <laughs> Rosie, do you want to come here maybe? <laughs> <laughs> See, this is how working in a group works really well with technology. <laughs> it it's literally a really small question, and yeah. you might have already said it. Is um, particular age groups that you work with? No, so adults with learning disability, anybody over the age of 18. And have you found maybe people like the younger population might be better with yeah. these than... So people You're with a learning older. disability who are younger, mm. they've had it, their digital natives just like anybody else that is younger, so their understanding is better. Yeah. And the same for staff in general, but there are obviously exceptions across the board. But the industry itself, the sector, doesn't really hasn't historically used technology 
in the way we're thinking of currently. Mm. So it's all very new, regardless of your age. Yeah. In many ways. <clears throat> right. Oh, sorry, we're, we're not very good at, if, at keeping the camera involved, are we? No. If yes. we have a question from Tom in the chat. Hi, Tom. How how are you? <laughs> um, hi, Eva. Um, uh, uh, um, can't see anybody. Um, oh, that's right. That's, that's, that's better. Shall I? Um, shall I? Oh, screen. we're sharing the screen. Sorry. Um, stop sharing the screen so you can hopefully okay. see us. Right. So um, I'm, I'm not a, a learning disability expert at all. I'm um, an old age psychiatrist and my interests are, are with people with dementia. But where where we've looked at kind of how you get things done, um, particularly in, in care homes, um, we we find that often the, the, the key thing is about um, really management support or staff feeling that they have a um, they have permission to to provide um, good care or permission to do the right thing. Um, so I'd imagine that in terms of getting anything done or bring about any change, then um, sort of management support, whatever we mean by management, um, is, is and this permission thing is really important. So did you find that, Tracy? Was it not kind of, it wasn't quite that sort of project maybe? Um. Well, it's not a project yet, we're still developing it, but we okay. did do a project with Vodafone a while ago, and yes, it does need leadership, that's one thing, not necessarily management, but certainly leadership, and um, I think that most staff are just a bit wary, they don't know what they don't know, and if they don't know how to use the technology themselves, it's very hard to teach somebody mm. else to use it, and it's also very difficult to see how you can adapt it for use for somebody with a learning disability, you need a, a degree of creativity. And that's what we're trying to work out how we do that right now. Thanks. Thank you, that, that's a great question. I think um, what we're looking at here is, of course, you know, now we've been with quite a big group struggling with the technology, right? So everybody's called Sol Albert and then we sort of <laughs> collectively come up with a way of solving this. But I think the problem is if you're on one to one and you are like, I wouldn't have a clue how to work with Alexa, but partly because Alexa just won't understand, will just refuse to understand what I ask it. And it's probably because I'm Dutch, but I can imagine if you're, if there are perhaps language difficulties sure. in learning disabilities yes. that Alexa will do the same as it as it does to me and goes I don't know who your mom is Eve and it's like what but I was asking to play simple minds you know so it, it, it's a little bit like that. Yeah. I just want to mention about the um, dementia aspect um, people with a learning disability particularly those with Down syndrome are also prone to early onset dementia mm. um, so there is a link between the two and with the with an older client group you'll tend to looking at maintaining their functionality but with a younger age group you're looking at trying to develop skills in order to increase their um, independence so it's a kind of a different way of looking mm. at it so mm -hmm. the same technology but used for different ways so you're often teaching them or coaching them to learn new skills mm -hmm. not and sometimes keeping the skills they've already got, but certainly trying to develop their skills so they can live a quality life. That's brilliant. We, we did a lot of work with learning disability and dementia detection uh, across cultures uh, in the past. So we've got some good software. And one of the things we've been thinking about is picking up how people sort of progress in their journey and, and whether we can pick up, whether people need more support perhaps in how they engage with the apps. Yeah. So this is something that we've been looking at uh, and perhaps as a focal point also in- And that's in why the, workforce development is important because if they haven't got the skills to enable that to happen, then it breaks down and the that's piece right. of equipment sat in a cupboard that's gathering right. dust somewhere for a long yeah. time. Yeah. yeah, and then it's finding yeah. out how to support people and, and having a systems feedback Correct. tell you that people yeah. aren't actually engaging and that it has been gathering us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, so, Easy. yes. Just one more, one more uh, comment in the chat from uh, Stuart. Stuart, I don't know if you'd like to unmute and, and make that comment, but or I could read it out. Yeah, uh, yeah, sure. Um, can anyone see me? I can't see myself for once. Um, yeah, so... Uh, Basically, uh, sorry, I'm just <laughs> fixing my camera. Um, okay. Um, yeah, there's a lot of research in HCI, the human computer interaction field, I work around participatory design, as in kind of 
embedding users end users into design processes um, um, in a in a in a very sort of um, deep way, um, almost like them leading design. Also, there's loads of stuff on sort of prototyping. Um, again, sort of thinking about some of the things you're talking about with certain kinds of technologies that you might want to kind of test prototype versions of with people um, and so on. And I was wondering um, also, I mean, again, some more of a comment. I suspect there's, again, I'm not familiar with it enough, but I suspect there's special methods people are using for specific things like learning disabilities to adapt and um, processes like participatory design um, to those sorts of um, uh, groups of people um, because of the sort of needs they might have. And yeah, it's more of a comment to say there's, it's interesting to hear about what you're doing and that there's this kind of world of potentially interesting world of research on, on that sort of stuff that connects with it. Yeah, there's not so much work being done with learning disabilities, so the, there is a gap in, re, in the research area there, specific, with technology that is. So yes, there is a gap. We did do a, a Vodafone project to do designing an app, and we did use co-creative techniques there. Mm -hmm. And um, what we found is exactly what we found of this one is that actually it's the staff and the people that's not just the staff, but everybody that has a vested interest in supporting that person in one, any way, shape or form has a very strong um, impact on whether they adopt any technology at all. So, and as a basis of that, we, where it worked well with Vodafone is where they use person-centered active support um, methodology, which helped break things down to small steps regularly and often, and that seemed to work. So I suppose part of what we would be doing would be see whether that is um, a good method to introduce this kind of technology to the majority of people, because everyone's different. So what might work for one may not work for another person. Yeah, it's that personalization, yeah. isn't it? Mm. Thank you so much. Great questions. I hope we can sort of work out some of this in the sand pits as well, maybe further on. Um, I would like to, oh, for those of you here, did you want to ask a question? 